Hello and welcome back to another Siemens S7 and Factory I.O. tutorial. In this video and the following few videos, we will be investigating various ways of controlling the water level in a tank and then moving steadily towards PID control. Now in this video, the basic on off control, we'll be covering three different sections. Firstly, we'll be setting up Factory I.O. and explaining how the water tank works. Secondly, we will set up the PLC to communicate to Factory IO. And thirdly, we will write code to take the 0 to 10 volts input from Factory IO coming from the tank level meter, and then we'll display it on the control panel LCD. To achieve this, we'll be making use of the normalize instruction, the scale instruction, and the convert instruction. And we'll be doing that both in ladder logic and SCL. So stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. Now, the first thing we need to do is open up Factory IO and we'll load the level control Factory IO scene preset. I'll just make sure we are in analog mode by right clicking on the container and checking configuration. Yes, we're in analog mode. OK, right. Let's set up the system for the PLC we are using by selecting file, then drivers. Then from the drop down menu, select Siemens S7 1200 stroke 1500, which brings up the host PLC in the middle and shows all the IO connections as well as the IP address. Now let's select configuration, which shows where the PLC is set up. This is where the PLC IP address is typed in and once set will remain for all scenes. It is also where the number and type of IO is selected, the number of Boolean IO and input output words and their types. OK, let's return to the driver screen and then to the tank level scene. Now let's dock all the tags and have a look at how the scene works. I will change one tag name and that is for the start button. I'll rename it drain. Let's see if that's updated the control panel by zooming in. Yes, it has. Right, let's open the fill valve and see what happens. Uh, nothing, as I've forgotten to put the system into play mode. So let's do that. Right, we can see the valve open and water starts entering the tank. The valve is closed at zero and goes all the way up to 10 for it to be fully opened. So we can stop filling the tank by closing the valve back to zero. This signifies 0 to 10 volts for the analog output. Then we can drain the tank by activating the discharge valve, which also works on a 0 to 10 volts basis. Let's stop that and let's open the fill valve again. Let's close off the fill valve too. You can see a short delay for the valves to close as you would in the real world. Okay, let's stop factory IO and make some room on screen for the TIA portal. Okay, that will do for now. 
Let's open up the TIA portal so we can configure the PLC. We'll just make sure we are making the best use of screen space. Now let's create a new project and we'll name it Tank Level Control 1. Then select Create. Now we need to select configure a device, then add new device. Under controllers, select Semantic S7-1200, then CPU, then unspecified, and then 6ES7-2XX, etc. Then we select add. This will allow the TIA portal to detect the exact S7-1200 we are using. Great, now let's choose detect, then start search. And you can see the device in the list with the IP address 192.168.123. Make sure it is highlighted, then select Detect. And 1212 c is detected. Great stuff. Now we need to configure the PLC to communicate with Factory I.O. So let's select General and then Properties. And scroll up. To the inputs section and select IO address. This is where we require to offset the start addresses for factory IO and I will enter 10 for start and end address. Then we need to scroll down to protection and security. I'll just widen the TIA portal window a little. Scroll down. I'll just widen the window a little more so we can see what we are selecting. Permit access with put get communication from remote partner should be selected. OK, let's save the setup and upload it to the PLC. So right click on PLC1 and select Download to Device, then Hardware Configuration. Start the search for the PLC on the network and load. Then on the load preview screen, select load again. And finish. OK, that's done. Now we are ready to make a start on the tags. Let's open up the drivers page in Factory IO and have a look at the inputs and outputs. So we can see on the left hand side of the PLC, we have the inputs from input 0.0, .0 drain to ID 108 set point. And on the right, we have outputs Q 0.0, .0 to QD 112 PV. Now let's set them all up in the tag list. So add new tag list, then open the tag list. Now we won't be using the boolean IO apart from the input drain so I will start by entering the analog IO starting with the level meter and I'll use the same names as in factory IO. So type in level meter and the data type should be real so we will get a decimal point in the reading. 
then we have to change the address to ID 100. That's fine. Right, rather than me entering all the tags, I have them saved in an Excel file. So I'll just import them and explain them afterwards. So select import, then I'll select the file tank level control part one and open. Then OK and OK again and all the tags are entered. As I go down the tags, starting with the inputs, we can see the same names and addresses in Factory IO as for the host PLC. They don't have to be the same, but I just decided to do things this way to avoid any confusion when debugging. The set point is the potentiometer on the panel, which we will see in a moment. Then we have the outputs, starting with the fill valve, then the discharge valve. All data types for the analog IO so far are real, but the last two, being SP and PV, are double integer data types, which are the readout displays on the panel. You can output real values to these readout displays, but if you do, you won't be able to display values in the hundreds as a decimal point would prevent this. So it's best to display an integer here and we'll see this shortly. After PV, which is the process value, we have some additional tags which I've added and we will see how these are used in a moment. The last tag is the drain tag, which we will use in the code to discharge the water from the tank. Okay, let's start coding by opening up main OB1. The first thing we need to do is get the displays working on the control panel. And I want to display the level in the tank and also the set point value that we will need to dial in on the potentiometer. Right, so let's call this first network level display. Let's take a look at the display in factory IO. It's the display on the right of the panel. Now the tank level goes from 0 to 300 centimetres, but the output from the tank is given to us by the factory IO level meter, which is 0 to 10 volts. So we have to convert the input signal from 0 to 10 volts to display 0 to 300 centimetres. As an example, 5 volts would equal 150 centimetres and 3.3 volts would equal 100 centimetres. It's all proportional, so hopefully you get the idea. Now, the way we do this is by using the conversion operations. Let's have a look at which instructions we will be using by having a look at the manual under basic instructions, section 8. So the first instruction we will use is the normalize instruction where we will read in the min and max values from the level meter that are given to us as voltages 0 and 10 volts and we will normalize them to between 0, 0.0 and 1.0 in real values. So a half tank level of 150 centimeters will give us an output value of 0.5. We will then take the output value and using the scale x instruction we will scale it to between 0 and 300. Again for example a half full tank giving us 0 0.5 from the normalize instruction would give us an output scale of 150. Again in a real value. However, even though we may use real values for calculations, we would like to see integer values on the display panel. So we use a conversion instruction to change a real value to an integer value and output it to the display by using the conversion instruction. If that's a little confusing, let's actually implement the use of these three instructions now so that it becomes a little clearer and we can actually see the results. 
Now we can go directly to the instructions under the conversion operation and bring them down, which we will do shortly. But another way of doing the same thing is by accessing them by selecting empty boxes then selecting their type. So let's start by bringing down two empty boxes. Let's insert the first box and then the second box. Now we need to select the type of instructions the boxes are. So the first one is norm X. Okay, and the second box is scale X. Let's have a look at the conversion operations in the basic instruction set. This is where we could have selected them directly and we will do this shortly when we need others. So let's enter the min and max value for norm X. So we can see on the factory IO setup, the values and the level meter go from 0 to 10 volts. So let's enter 0 in the min and 10 in the max. Then the value comes from the level meter ID 100. So let's select that. Then if you can remember from the tag list, I declared some temporary variables. So let's select MD 100 now, which is temp one. So norm X should calibrate 0 to 10 volts as a real value between 0 and 1 and place the result in temp 1. Now, moving to scale X, the input value being the output value from norm X, which is temp 1, and the min and max values should be 0 to 300, respectively. Then the output should be the real process value, PV, real. You can see the instructions have automatically selected real to real in both cases. Okay, moving to the next network, we could of course add another box in the same way we did before, but this time we'll bring down the convert instruction directly from the basic instructions. Just as an example, of an optional way of doing things. We'll bring it down into network two so we can see it on screen rather than adding it to the output from scale X in network one. And we will convert real to double integer so we can output the value directly to the small display on the control panel in factory IO. So in is PV real and out is simply PV. Great, that's done. Now let's test what we've done so far by downloading the code to the PLC. I'll just compile the program to make sure I haven't made any errors. Okay, no errors or warnings. Now let's download the code. continue with out synchronization. Okay, we stop the PLC and load. And finish. Now let's run the program and monitor. Now let's go to factory IO and connect to the PLC. And now we can test the code by opening the fill valve, not forgetting to put factory IO in play mode. Okay, you can now see the tank filling and the variables in the code changing as the tank fills. If we open up the fill valve more, we increase the speed of filling the tank. Let's close the fill valve and see the results. 
we can see we have 4.36 volts in Normex and 0.436 on the output, which you would expect in this example as the ratio is 10 to 1. Then 0.436 is the input to scale X. As scale X goes from 0 to 300, if you multiply 0.4361376 by 300, you will get 130.8413. And when that is converted to an integer, you will get 131, which is displayed on the control panel. If you also look at the tank, you will see that the water level ties in to this value. So that's all working fine. OK, let's stop the PLC. Now, coding the conversions in ladder logic is probably the preferred way for most people, as it gives you a visual of all the parameters involved. Although, as I'm splitting the screen between the TIA portal and factory IO, and the ladder logic is taking up so much room, I'm going to continue the program in SCL as well as rewrite this bit of code in SCL too. So you can see the difference and choose how you would prefer to do it for yourselves. So let's add a function block and let's call it conversion. And select OK. Let's just take a look at the ladder logic again. And I'll just widen the program area a little to see all the code. And I'll also open up the testing area too. Now we can see that the output from Normex is temp1. So in SCL, we put the output down first. So let's open up the SCL block and start entering code. Let's type temp and select temp1. Let's make it equal to, and from the conversion operations, let's bring down norm x and fill in the fields like we did in the ladder logic. So initial in is zero. Let's see more of the code by moving the line to the right a bit. OK. I'll just add the decimal point and another zero to the min and then add 10.0 to the max. Now, value is the level meter. I'll just add a semicolon at the end. I'll just tab the value and max down so it looks a little better on screen. Looks like we have an error because of the red underline. So what's wrong there? Ah, I see it. It's a semicolon instead of a colon. So let's put that right now. And it's sorted. OK, moving on. Now let's add the scale X instruction. So in this case, PV real is equal to and bring down scale X from the conversion operations. And if you can remember from the ladder logic, the min value is 0, 0.0, and the max is 300. Now, value is what is coming down from norm X, which is temp one. And we will just add the semicolon at the end. Again, we'll tab the value and max down. 
Then the last instruction is convert to change from a real to an integer number. So PV, which is the display, is equal to and bring down the convert instruction. Now we have to select real, then to double integer. Then we select what we are converting, which is PV real, and again end it with a semicolon. Let's check if this all works by downloading it to the PLC. That's done. Actually, we first need to go back to main OB1, then delete the logic as it is now duplicated. So let's right click and delete each instruction. Then we will bring down the conversion function and place it in network one so that the function is called from main OB1. I'll just rename the network to level display conversion. Now let's download the code again to the PLC and see if it all works as expected. Let's reduce the window size a little and monitor the SCL variables. Now, as soon as we select monitor and run the PLC, we can see all the variable values. Right, let's run factory IO and open the fill valve to the tank. And we can see it is working as it did before. But in this case, we have used SCL and the code takes up a lot less screen space. Right, I'll just fill the tank a little quicker by opening the valve more. Then I'll close it off. You can see there was a little bit of a delay from closing the valve to when water actually stopped entering the tank. Okay, we can see 155 on the control panel display. And if we zoom in on the tank, we can see the same there too. We also see 155 in QD112 while monitoring in SCL. Obviously you would use the coding method you prefer, but if a person comes from a programming background, they may prefer SCL whereas a person coming from an engineering background may prefer ladder logic. Right, let's stop the PLC and stop factory IO2, and we'll add another function and call it setpoint. However, we'll leave this to the next video. Until then, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, please give it a like and please subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified of future videos as soon as they become uploaded. Also, check out my Patreon account. Uh, via the link in the description. Okay, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.